today what we are going to learn is Acts chapter 15, Acts chapter 15, which is the the record of the historical incident took place in the city of Jerusalem, which is known as the Jerusalem Council. Jerusalem Council. This this was the first council of the Christian Church held in the city of Jerusalem. Acts chapter 15. Doctor Luke records this historical incident, and also we understand that this council took place around A.D. 50. A.D. 50. A.D. 50. After. the first missionary journey of apostle paul in the previous class we have learned paul and his company visited many places many places in the uh, in the eastern countries there and witness for the lord jesus christ and for the gospel and many churches were established and once they had completed their journey we read that they returned to the church at antioch because from it was from there they were sent into the missionary journey as the holy spirit of god had called them to the service where and do they have been chosen now they have satisfactorily and successfully completed their first missionary journey so during this time there was a problem there was a problem that crept into the churches actually some people came to antioch came to antioch from jerusalem and that, that means these people are believers these people are believers but the, their problem was actually paul preached the gospel of the grace of jesus christ gospel of the grace of yes. jesus christ what does it mean by saying the gospel of the grace of god that means god saves a sinner by his grace god saves a sinner by his grace for we are saved by the grace we are saved by the grace ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 so the gospel of the grace of god was preached in every places that paul and his company were sent there and every place as the churches were established they all came into existence as the members of the church were saved by grace but some of the jewish christians jewish christian who were also the members of the church at jerusalem these people have come to christianity from jewish background you understand they have come to christianity from jewish background and uh, when they came to christianity these people had mixed the gospel with the law gospel with the law of moses what does the law of moses teaches he that does it shall be justified that means according to mosaic law a person is justified by in perfect obedience to the uh, to the law of moses law of Moses. In doing so, that you shall be justified. But in a, a contrary to that, in that in the gospel of the grace of the Lord, we understand that it is not by doing something that we should be justified, but having faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That means the moment the sinner trusts the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is saved and is justified before God. And this is the difference between the law of Moses and the the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. so these people came into the church at antioch and they began to teach the believers innocent believers in the church at uh, this uh, antioch and taught them that it is simply believing in the lord jesus christ as sinner will not be saved if you want your salvation perfected if you want your salvation perfected you should believe in the lord jesus christ that is true but at the same time you should obey the mosaic law everybody understand that yeah. that means these people begin to teach that you should believe in the lord jesus christ for your salvation that means salvation is actually faith in the lord jesus christ plus work that means necessarily they should 
get circumcised. Necessarily, they should circumcised because the law says that everyone uh, in the Jewish community, the, the men particularly, uh, on the eighth day of their birth, that they should be strictly circumcised because the law of covenant of circumcision was given to uh, Abraham from God. So every Jew had to obey it. So these people taught that it is salvation is the result of what? Belief in the Lord Jesus Christ plus the obedience of the law, especially the observation of the act of circumcision. So this has roused a situation in the church at Antioch and uh, people were in confusion. People were in confusion. Paul and his company went there and they taught the pure gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and they, he also taught them the pure and fundamental doctrines of the New Testament. Now these believers are confounded because of this heretic teachers. They infiltrated into the church hearing. Now the believers are in a confusion. There was a problem and therefore the brethren, they sat together and they uh, decided that we would take this matter into Jerusalem to the apostles. We would take this matter into Jerusalem to the apostles for their consideration and their opinion. Why the reason, why the reason that the believers or the, 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 the elders of the assembly have decided to take this matter into the apostles in Jerusalem, it was not necessarily because the church of Jerusalem had any exclusive authority upon the other churches which were established all around. No, you never think that the Jerusalem church was a capital church and under which were the other, uh, other local churches which were established were functioning. No, not necessarily, not because of that. The Bible says, the problem was initiated from the brethren who came up from Jerusalem. Understand? The problem is, who brought this problem actually? The people who came to Antioch from Jerusalem. They created the issue. Therefore, the apostles decided that we would take this matter to the apostles in Jerusalem from whence the problem started. So we will settle the matter there. So they, the church deputed some people which included what? Peter and uh, Paul, Barnabas and all these people and they went into the, uh, the elders and the apostles of the church at uh, Jerusalem. Here a council was held, a council was called over. This is known as the first church council in the history of the church. The first church council in the history of the church. The subject of discussion was whether a person to become a Christian, uh, is it uh, mandatory, that means is it necessary that he should first uh, observe the Mosaic law and then believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You understand the question? The subject handled there was, in order that a sinner to become a Christian believer, uh, is it necessary, is it uh, enough that he should believe in the Lord Jesus Christ or should he Believe the Lord Jesus Christ plus, according to the law of Moses, he should observe the, the, the law also, especially the act of circumcision. So that was the subject. The presider of the council was the, the was not James of James, the elder of the church at Jerusalem. James the church, the elder of the church at Jerusalem was the presiding person on this council. And here the matter was brought. The, the main speaker, <coughs> these speakers were Peter and Barnabas and then Paul. Peter, Barnabas and Paul were the three people who presented the issue before this council. So when this issue was brought, out, brought, brought about, there, there should have a settlement for this issue. Unless otherwise this matter was resolved there in Jerusalem itself, Fast, this would spread all around and the churches will be in great confusion and there will arise the people who would also teach that the great gospel of the grace is not sufficient enough to save a sinner. And whereas a, believe, a person in order to become a Christian, he should become first a proselyte. Proselyte means he first become, uh, uh, become a Jew by the obedience of the Mosaic law, especially the act of circumcision. And then later, he should become a Christian. That was a very false and heretic doctrine. 
Therefore, Peter profoundly presented this message. What message? How the Spirit of God has been working with the apostles like Peter, Paul, Barnabas and all these people and how these messages were accepted to the community, uh, a community and they got saved. That means Peter witnessed how Cornelius had believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and had received the Holy Spirit of God exactly as they were. They had received the Holy Spirit of God the day of Pentecost when they believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. So he had witnessed it. Even he had witnessed how the Samaritans received the Lord Jesus Christ and saved. So within this experience, Peter stood straight before this uh, council and presented that it is absolutely and fundamentally by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord saves a sinner. Not by the act of the obedience of the observation of Mosaic, no, especially the circumcision and uh, other practices. So grace alone saves a sinner, that was the message. Peter presented it profoundly and Paul supported it and Barnabas also supported the message. James, the James the, the presider of the council was keenly listening to the presentation of Peter, Paul and Barnabas of the issue. And finally, the council was well convinced council was well convinced that it was not uh, legitimate for a Gentile person to observe the act of circumcision in obedience to the Mosaic law in order to become a Christian believer. But uh, any person, that is whether it is you or Gentile, any person in order to become a Christian believer, he or she has to personally exercise their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and his substitutionary. Whereas he or she is saved freely by the grace of God. Martin Luther, when he made the reformed theology, he emphasized that it was the salvation is by faith alone, by grace alone, and by blood alone, and by Christ alone. So salvation, you and I experience the salvation only by trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ upon the salvation redemption that the Lord Jesus Christ uh, has wrought about on our behalf on the cross of Calvary. And this message was profoundly established at the, in the Jerusalem Council. And you know, when the large number of people from the city of Jerusalem, that means the, from the Jerusalem church itself, and the delegates who have been delegated from the church of Antioch, maybe from other churches, they all were present there. The message was profoundly presented, and a general acceptance was yearned by the, the congregation and finally we read in the chapter that James the presider of the council himself stood up and he gave a conclusion for the message of council. Conclusion for the message of council. When James stated, he said that God, we have heard how Simon, that means Peter has been explaining to us the Holy Spirit of God was willing to save the sinners by the gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ. So he supported absolutely uh, what was presented by Apostle Peter. And then he said, wherefore, we should not uh, insist, we should not insist any Gentile person to bear any extra burden, any extra burden which uh, we ourselves and our fathers were unable to carry on. You understand? The Jewish forefathers were unable to carry on. In fact, this uh, observation of this law, because the Bible says that we have ten uh, commandments given to us in, in, in the book of Exodus chapter 20. No Jew was able to completely obey into all the ten commandments. Because that means suppose that person, he observes all the nine and then he fails in the ten that it all become nullified. You understand? So, it's actually no single Jew was able to justify by the observa observation of all the Ten Commandments. So, you may be asking me that the reason why then God had given the people the Ten Commandments in case that they, if they could not be justified by the observance of those laws. The thing is that God gave these Ten Commandments to the children of Israel to teach them that by the obedience to this law, they could never be justified themselves. They could never be justified themselves. Because 
we are frail beings, we are human beings and we are sinful beings and we cannot uh, observe all the Ten Commandments without faith. So God has taught the people by the observation of the law of Moses that they were unable to accomplish all the requirements which God had made with them in the Ten Commandments. So the, the law of Moses was a schoolmaster which was leading a sinner to the salvation of the, by grace. Understand? It was a schoolmaster which led the people, led the children of Israel unto the salvation by grace which is available through Jesus Christ our Lord. So therefore the council has decided or come to a conclusion that how the Gentiles should be saved and how this problem to be resolved which was, uh, which was coming up in the church at Daniel and also which would ruin the doctrinal stand of the church at Jerusalem and uh, any churches which were established in those days in the surroundings of those places. So the council have unanimously decided and that decided three factors, four factors, and those things. Uh, the presider of the council, who was James, the, the, the elder of the church at Jerusalem, and he announced before the congregation, saying, "Wherefore now, now on, now on, very, very funny this uh, this uh, resolution I read it, and uh, here we read." in chapter 15 that the final conclusion, that the conclusion of the message and the, uh, and the resolution for the issue that very, very intelligently handled by the presider of the council, James, the elder of the church at Jerusalem, he said that henceforth any Gentiles who comes to the Lord Jesus Christ by putting his trust in the Lord and his salvation should not partake from anything that is offered to idol. Anything that is to offer to idol. That was the first, first suggestion made by the council. There are four suggestions there. The first suggestion is that any person from the Gentile background who comes to the Lord Jesus Christ by trusting him as his personal savior and Lord, henceforth should abstain from taking part Anything that, that was offered to the idols. Even otherwise also the Jewish were the Jewish people were not permitted to take anything that was offered to the idols. Because the Bible says, no Orthodox Jew should take part from anything that was offered to the idols. Because that was abhorrent to God. And secondly, uh, they should keep themselves away from fornication. They should keep <laughs> them, themselves away from fornication. And uh, chapter 5 verse 15 verse 20 and 28 and Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. So here actually the thing is that that we should understand that the second resolution which was passed down by the Jerusalem council was that the, any people who trust the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation should keep themselves away from the act of fornication. Otherwise also we are in the book of the prophets and also book of the kings that the children of Israel were forbidden, uh, uh, forbidden to do fornication and adultery because God hates it by saying in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not commit adultery. So that has been forbidden to them and then thirdly, no believer who has trusted the Lord Jesus Christ should eat anything that is died with the suffocation. Anything that is died with the suffocation. Don't take an animal and hold its own neck and then so that it, it should block its breathing and then kill him and then eat. Bible very strictly uh, admonishes the children of Israel that should, they should take part from the meat which was what? Slaughtered, slaughtered uh, the, the blood which was drained out of the flesh. The blood which was drained out of the flesh. Because very strictly in the book of Leviticus chapter 17 verse 17 we read that when thou eatest the meat that thou shalt not eat the meat with the blood because the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. So our life is in the blood. If there is no circulation then we will die. Right? So the life is in the 
blood and its circulation. Therefore, God has commanded the children of Israel that they should not eat the meat with the blood because very strictly they have been admonished that thou shalt not eat the meat with the blood because the life of the blood, the life of the flesh is the blood and therefore the blood is to be drained out before the meat is eaten. Understand? So therefore, anything that is suffocated should be avoided. And finally, you should also, they should also avoid eating the blood. Eating the blood. I don't know any cultured people would eat the blood. I have seen in the, the African continent in the YouTube, some uh, YouTube videos where the, the African tribal people, uh, non-cultured people, uh, tribal people, who are naked in their appearance and uh, they are dwelling in the jungles, and they take the blood of the animals and they drink it with the milk. I don't, I don't uh, think that anybody in our country or in the, in the culture the countries, they do these practices. So, so this is it. For, as for Jews, they were forbidden to take the, uh, the blood. So four resolutions are made in this council. What are they? Number one, no believer henceforth should take part from anything that is offered to the idols. Anything that is offered to the idols. And number two, all believers should keep themselves away from the act of fornications and adultery. Number three, that they should keep themselves away from eating anything that is died in suffocation. Died in suffocation. Fourthly, they should avoid taking the blood as their, uh, as their food. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 23. Every, everyone who gathered in the council were perfectly happy by the resolution which was made up by the NCLA council and then they decided to write these resolutions and send it to the churches. That means, I don't know. So in order to resolve the issue, I am very sorry the connection is very poor, so intermittent disconnection you may expect. See, the thing is that the, the issue was, it came up there and the issue had to be very wisely resolved. Otherwise, the issue which was brought at the church of Antioch from the church, church at Jerusalem, especially by those Judaicists. The Judaicists means people who mix it, uh, Jewish religion with the, the gospel of grace. And uh, they brought and made confusion to the believers in the church at Antioch and now very miraculously and wisely this has been handled before the Jerusalem Council and the issue was resolved. Then a great uh, obedience to uh, the word of God and its teaching was uh, admitted by all the churches and everybody were alert, alerted by the Holy Spirit of God to obey the decision of the council at the church at Jerusalem. Understand? Everybody understand now what was the Jerusalem Council? Jerusalem Council was the first church council which was held in the city of Jerusalem under the presidership of the one of the elders of the church at Jerusalem. The issue presented there was what? Whether a Gentile person in order to become a Christian uh, should he first obey the law of Moses especially observing the act of circumcision. Uh, or I, put, I will put it in this way, in order to become a Christian, does it, is it mandatory that a Gentile become a proselyte before that he should become a Christian believer? So council has unanimously determined and decided that it is not mandatory and necessary that a proselyte to, uh, that a sinner to become a proselyte in order to become a Christian straight away he can come to the Lord Jesus Christ and trust him and then believe him for his salvation. I understand everybody got what I have explained. Any of you got any doubt? Anybody got any doubt? No. And this resolved the issue for good and later on such issues have never come up in the congregation anywhere in the apostolic period. And now let us look into the 16th chapter. 16th chapter. After taking the 16th chapter, I will be giving you the note on the board so you can take it down. Chapter 16 begins the second missionary journey of Apostle Paul. At second missionary, we know that chapter 13 uh, began with the first missionary journey and then it continued through chapter 14. And chapter 15 we have the Jerusalem Council and then chapter 16 we have 
the second ministry, uh, missionary journey begins. We read, read from the first verses that then he came to Derbe and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain Jewish woman, who believed but his father was Greek. He was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted to have him go on with him and took him and uh, circumcised him because of the Jews who were in that region, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered to them the decrees to keep which were determined by the apostles and the elders in Jerusalem. See here, Paul and his com company were given the letter which was written by the apostles and the elders of the city at Jerusalem regarding the issue which was prevalent there in the church at Antioch and uh, the resolution what they have taken in the Jerusalem council. And now this letter was read uh, in, in the churches wherever they visited. But here begins the second missionary journey. In the second missionary journey, Paul and his people, Paul and Silas, Paul and Silas, and uh, before that we know that uh, there was a partition by the team. That means in the first missionary journey there was a young boy accompanied them whose name was what? John Mark. John Mark. And when they came, when the team came to the place called Pisidian Antioch, there were two Antioch. One is that uh, the Antioch from, from where the ministry mission mission started their ministry. And this is a faraway place or a between place which is called Pisidian Antiochia. So this was a hilly place. The journey was very tough and the, the wind and weather were not very much favorable. Maybe because of homesickness of this end boy from, from his house that he never traveled to such a long distance. Or maybe having some health issues or mental, uh, uh, you know, unacceptableness that he decided to go back. And uh, he left the team and he went back to his home. And this was quite uh, not accepted by Apostle Paul. And second time, Barnabas, though he was a man of grace and a man of wisdom, knowledge and humility, that he had a strong contention between Paul, uh, Paul and himself, because Barnabas insisted Paul to take Mark again to the second mission journey. But Paul, or Paul or objected. He said that the one who left us at the Pisces in Antioch in the journey, during the uh, middle of the journey, he is not fix, fixing or not fitting for the second missionary journey. So I don't want to take him, he said. So now there was a great contention between Paul and Barnabas. Now the team was parted into two and he, Barnabas took uh, John, the, John, John Mark and went into one direction and Paul accompanied Silas and then Timothy and they together went into their second missionary journey. So there is a, there, there we need to understand one, one practical aspect that well, the Holy Spirit of God has not recorded the ministry of Barnabas and uh, John Mark after the partition from this place. And some people I have heard that the Holy Spirit of God was not pleased in the work of Barnabas and uh, uh, John Mark because he had uh, what uh, he had contended with the Apostle Paul and therefore the Spirit of God has not written those things in the book. It's not like that. The, the primary aim of the Holy Spirit of God, God was to promote and present the work of Apostle Paul among the Gentiles. Among the Gentiles, how he carried out the message of the gospel. So, those things are written by, written by Dr. Luke here and Luke is also accompanied to Paul and his team from second missionary journey on. So in the B section we understand that. And therefore we should not uh, think that God was not well pleased in the activities of Barnabas. God was pleased and they also might have visited many places and established many churches therein. But the Spirit of God was, uh, you know, angered to write down and then uh, give us as a document that how the Holy Spirit of God was working through Apostle Paul to evangelize the world because Paul has been called by the Holy Spirit of God as an apostle to the Gentiles. So that was the primary concern here. Here we understand that he took the team members and then went into where? Where the place called Lystra and the, the, the Derba. We know that in the previous chapter, the first missionary journey, we know 
that Israel and Deba, when they when they came there, the people uh, uh, accepted their message. But later on, they stoned him, and where he was drawn out the city, asked uh, a dead dead person. But after a while, that uh, while the while his disciples were standing around him, that the Holy Spirit of God raised him up, and then he went to where went into the other places like Ekerim and uh, uh, many other cities to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it is generally believed that Paul was there, died, Paul, Paul was died, died at the stoning at this Lystra and later God raised him up again because God wanted him to just accomplish the ministry which God had understood him. So now he went into the place called Derbe and Lystra and there in the church, there in the church, there was an young man whose name was what? Timothy. His name was Timothy. And even before also, I think that Paul had met him. And there is some references in his epistles. And you know, he had met him in his first missionary journey when he went to Derbar Nisra. But he did not take him and took him as a, 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 a co worker there at the first sight because he left him in the assembly so that he should be he should be disciplined and equipped in the local church so that he should become a good instrumental in the propagation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And second time when he went to the came to this place, we know that by the time that he met Timothy the first time in his first mission journey and at the beginning of the second mission journey, when he came there, there was a young man whose name was Timothy, son of a certain Jewish woman whose father was a Greek. That means his mother was a mother was a Jewish woman, and even her, his uh, grandmother Lois was a woman of great faith. But his father was a Greek Greek man, and it was an intercultural marriage in which Timothy was born. That is Jewish, Grecian, uh, intercultural marital relationship. Timothy was born. But Timothy was a very young, good Christian believer, godly Christian believer. And uh, he was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra at Ekenium. That he had a very general public, uh, public attention and public testimony and public attention. Because every brethren spoke about him in a very good manner. Paul wanted to have him go on with him. And he took him and uh, circumcised him because of the Jews, Jews who were in that region for they all knew that his father was a Greek. So just before we land in the Jerusalem council, the council made the resolution that henceforth any Gentile believer who trusts the Lord Jesus Christ, Gentile person who trusts the Lord Jesus Christ, it is not mandatory, mandatory to obey the law of Moses in obedience to take the act of circumcision. But even Paul himself carried this letter from Jerusalem and they distributed to the churches there. But still, Paul was willing to circumcise Timothy. Uh, why? Because Jerusalem Council decided circumcision was no more necessary in order a person to become a Christian believer. But Paul again circumcised him. The reason that his father was a Greek, his mother was a Jew. And he was visiting the places where the Jewish density was high. So when somebody is asking about uh, Timothy, and if they come to know that he is a half Jew, that means half Jew and half Gentile, the people would insist uh, them to have the circumcision. So in order to avoid a confrontation by the Orthodox Jew, that Paul made him circumcised, made him circumcised. This has been a situation psychology Paul applied in regards to this young man Timothy. And as they went through the cities, they delivered to them the decrees to keep, which were determined by the apostles and elders at Jerusalem. That means the, what was resoluted by the council at Jerusalem was handed over to the churches and uh, Paul instructed them to keep those decrees. So the churches were strengthened in faith and uh, increased in number daily. See, one of the greatest blessings of the apostolic ministry in those days was the Holy Spirit of God was moving very, very powerfully and the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ was found everywhere the gospel was presented and the churches were increasingly coming up both in quality and in quantity. Some people are only 
our uh, aim that that quantity of the church so people i have seen that some people they gather people in the church without uh, giving the people people the proper conviction of repentance and salvation so many of the new gen churches they have many very many members in their congregation everybody comes and everybody is meeting on the uh, tambourine and uh, playing on the organ and uh, singing together worshiping together praising together and then presenting messages everything is going on and everybody is claiming that they are spirit filled and even speaking in the uh, in the tongue of the angels right in which they delighted so i understand i i understand what i understand is that a proper gospel is to be presented before a person is brought to the congregation and his fellowship a person should be born again and paul and his company wherever they moved around they preached the gospel profoundly and finally we read that uh, the churches were strengthened in faith and uh, increased in number daily this is the outcome of the work of the holy spirit of god what is happening today the churches are being declined members are driven out of the churches the churches are filled with only old members old old members old men and women youngsters are not there that means new additions are not there people from outside they are born again are not been brought to the congregation so now when they have gone through phrygia what's number say phrygia and the region of galatia they were forbidden by the holy spirit to preach the word in asia phrygia and the, the region of galatia paul and his uh, uh, company they visited but there was a strong opposition for 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 strong opposition from the holy spirit of god not to preach the gospel in asia not to preach the gospel in asia see i have been a minister to the gospel for the past 44 years in my personal experience i will tell you a truth that uh, if i go to a particular corner on a public place and where i preach the gospel very perfectly and profoundly the holy spirit of god speak through me and a good number of people in attendance let's listen it they gather around and they give the key in attention to messages i have personally experience but same person i myself go to another place where i do not feel a guidance of the holy spirit of god when i open up my mouth to preach the gospel the gospel doesn't come and uh, i feel something that you know we being strained by that place the holy spirit of god doesn't work we have to realize that in such places that should not come should not be compelled ourselves to continue what and we have to see, go to the other place and then preach the gospel of jesus christ so there are some places where the holy spirit of god doesn't want us to preach you understand doesn't want us to preach, preach. we do not know why maybe because of the nefariousness or wickedness of the people there and god doesn't want to preach there even though god wanted to save them that the god knows in his omniscience that these people would not accept the gospel of jesus so they drive they were driven out from there we know that as the holy spirit of god forbidden them from phrygia and the region of galatia the spirit of god forbidden them to preach the gospel and after they had come to uh, messia they tried to go into bithynia but the spirit did not permit them there also in a messia and bithynia they tried to go there also the spirit of god did not let them go uh, so passing by messia they came down to troas they came to troas this troas again mentioned in chapter 20 verse 7 and when paul reached there in troas that he delayed there for 7 days to observe the lord's table on the first day of the week and that mention is given there that mention is given there and therefore therefore uh, we understand so they came to that place and then and a vision appeared to paul when they when he came to troas paul had to witness a vision there he saw a witness vision there a vision in the night a man of macedonia stood and uh, pleaded with him saying come over to macedonia and help so paul had a vision what was the vision that vision is actually we know that uh, luke also asso- uh, started associating with the paul from here on uh, in chapter 16 and when they came to troas paul had a vision in the night what was the vision 
he a man was standing in front of him in the night and was speaking to him hi lord to macedonia and help us come to macedonia and help and this vision is known as paul's macedonian call paul's macedonian call do you please understand that in phrygia and the region of galatia and in mysia also in uh, uh, another place the all these places the spirit of god forbidden the mission missionaries that they should not stay there and preach the gospel but uh, when they came to throw us in the night vision that he had a vision in in which a man of macedonia stood and uh, pleaded with him saying come over to macedonia and help us this has been a great vision that paul had experienced and now after he had seen the vision immediately we sought to go to macedonia concluding that the lord had called us to preach the gospel to them see this is what i tell, told you yesterday the other day when i told that 12 lessons that we have we are to learn from the the missionary journey so paul paul and the, our one we i have emphasized that they had their missionary journeys by the guidance of the holy spirit of god where they had to go the holy spirit of god spoke to them and where they should not go the spirit of spirit of god spoke to them if a man of god is in the vision of god and in obedience to the guidance of the spirit of god surely the spirit of god will guide them where to go and will stop him where he should not go understand where he should go and where he should not go this is what the word of god tells us and also please understand and immediately they left to macedonia because he was obedient to the vision of god on one occasion uh, when he was talking to agrippa the king he said that agrippa the king see when he was presenting him his uh, the background of his repentance and his salvation then he said that i decided that i should not be disobedient to the heavenly vision i should not be disobedient to the heavenly vision see they set for macedonia therefore sailing from troas we ran a straight course to sambo thrice and the next day came to neapolis so paul and his company were traveling from place to place place to place where where preaching the gospel of jesus christ and on the sabbath day sabbath day means saturday saturday and on the sabbath day we went out the city to uh, to the river side where prayer was customarily made and we sat down and spot to the woman who met there see this is a best story of the conversion of lydia lydia and another woman and another woman who was uh, who was being a uh, 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 demon possessed demon possessed and also the conversion of the philippian jailer three incidents are mentioned here in this chapter all the three in short i will explain number one when they came to the place macedonia this is their first entrance in the euro there this was all in the first missionary journey the team was working in the asia region and now they are stepping into the first city of the continent of euro and where they came and from there to came to philippi they came to a uh, they say so they they came to philippi which is the foremost city of that part of macedonia a colony and we were staying in that city for some time and on the sabbath day we went out the city to the river side where prayer was customarily made and we sat down and spoke to the woman who met there see why did paul went uh, go to the river side so i tell you in those days the travel journey through the land was very less that means because of the because of they feared the attacks from the brutal wild animals uh, seldom they travel through the ground and they most of their uh, their journeys were travels were through the rivers and the seas rivers and the seas so every every harbor there will be a synagogue or a marketplace because the people will bring the things there by the river bank and then put the things there in and the people will come to marketplace place so in the marketplace either a marketplace or a synagogue would be there if there is a synagogue then the sabbath day the jews people of that city would gather there to learn the word of god especially the law of moses and to have their prayers so their gathering place was synagogue 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 the word comes from greek word synagogue 
is a meeting place where the people are meeting together to learn the law of Moses and also to hold prayer meetings and testimony. See, such a place he saw and there was no synagogue there but he found a marketplace. So marketplace when he found, so there he spoke to the woman who met there. There were some women there in the marketplace. They all were business people, that means merchants. And now a certain woman, there were a few women there, and those women Paul preached there, to talk to them. And there was a certain woman named Lydia, whose name was what? Lydia. Lydia. And Lydia heard us, she was a seller of the purple from the city of Thyatira. Well, you know purple? Purple was a very, very expensive apparel. A very expensive apparel. And she, she was a seller of purple. That means she was a very rich woman. Not just like the people who are uh, selling on this food part. You understand? Because she was a very rich woman. Because what she used to sell was purple. Purple the essential and the expensive uh, apparel. So when you, we read that, you know, she heard us, name her, heard us. She was seller of purple from the city of Taidariya who worshipped God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. Here I want to emphasize, many people I have heard asking that, you know, you went to that place and you were bought this place and how many souls were saved. It is not our business to save people. It is not our business to save people. What is our business? You go and preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Saving business is the business of the Holy Spirit of God. It is not your business. You have not promised God that I will bring 50 people or 100 people or 1000 people this year to our foundation. Only your uh, obligation and duty is to go out, stand there, preach the gospel. Whoever you see in your daily life, you preach them the gospel and then you talk to them. When you talk to them, you, you talk to them the gospel of Jesus Christ and they shall be saved. So now the Holy Spirit of God opened the heart of Lydia to understand what she heard. See, when we preach the gospel, the Holy Spirit of God, if opens the hearts of the hearers, definitely they will utter a message. As a result, they will, they will be accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. So we said that she is a very rich woman. And you know, see, now a certain woman, Named Lydia Hades, she was a fellow partner from the city of Taitharia who worshipped God that the Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. Even the Lord Jesus Christ in John's Gospel said that except my father is attracted, you that you will never believe in me. Except my father attracted you onto, the, onto me that you will never believe in me. That the very drawing of the sinner to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ is the is fundamentally and basically the duty of the, the Father God. You know, Father God, God attracted you and me to the cross of Jesus Christ so that we looked on the cross and accepted him as our Savior. So now, and when she and their household were baptized, see, as a result, when the Holy Spirit of God received, when the Holy Spirit of God opened the heart of the the woman whose name was Lydia, she warmly and happily accepted the message which was presented by Apostle Paul, the city of Philippi. See, in a larger city or in a marketplace or in an open synagogue, when we go and preach the gospel, not every hearers are saved, but there are some few people there. There are few people who are, who are uh, known to the Holy Spirit of God and they we not understand. And the Holy Spirit of God opened her heart and she warmly accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in heart. And not only she, she and her household were baptized. That means she received the Lord Jesus Christ and if she had the husband and he too he received and the children received the Lord Jesus Christ. Household means even the maidens or the servants of the house. Together they all received the Lord Jesus Christ. So soon after, they received the Lord by having heard from Apostle Paul. They all were baptized. I understand that this family has been chosen by the Holy Spirit of God, the city of Philippi, the first European city. Where do Apostle Paul and his company went into the second missionary journey to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ? So here in the city, later on, a church was established. This is known as the church at Philippi. 
And to this church, Apostle Paul has written the epistle unto the Philippians. Understand, only a fourth chapter. See, there were three converts primarily to this church. Number one is Lydia, the woman, a rich woman who was a seller of purple in the marketplace. And the Holy Spirit of God was pleased to save her by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And she opened her heart unto the Lord. And she and her household received the Lord Jesus Christ and then baptized and then became the members of the Christian church. And then we know what they are still listening here. Verse number 16. Now it happened. So now verse number 15. Listen. And when she and her household were baptized, she begged us saying, If you have dead me to the faithful to the Lord, come to my house and say. So she persuaded us. See, the very moment this family came to the Lord Jesus Christ, they welcomed the servants of God to stay in their house. You understand? Blessed is the house where the servants of the Lord are welcomed and treated because they are not servants. We read the, the second English chapter 4 where the Elisha, the man who visited the place of Shunem, uh, he used to pass through that place and there was a godly woman in Shunem. She looked at this man several times and then she insisted her husband to make a special room and a table and a chair and a lampstand for this man of God because she said she recommended her husband saying that the man who passed by our street is indeed a man of God and next time when he passed by this place let him come into our house and get a lighted here take rest here and uh, this would be a blessing so the, her husband made a small room uh, along with the the house and uh, all made all the arrangements and the man of God was let stay there in the house. So blessed is the person who opens his house and his residence to the servants of the Lord so that they should be treated for the namesake of the Lord. God's blessings will be showered on them. Now may she welcome Apostle Paul and his company to stay in her house. So she was a genuine convert by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so now we read verse number 16. Now it happened, as we went to prayer, that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us, who brought their masters much profit by fortune telling. And another incident, the second convert, when Paul went into the street, she, he met another woman who was a fortune teller. You know who is a fortune teller? There are so many people with the tarot uh, board as well as, you know, with the parrot and cards, parrot and cards with the tarot boards and the uh, 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 board, Avuja board, people would be telling your fortune, that you know, what you would become and uh, what, what kind of luck are waiting for you, yeah. eh, what kind of luck are waiting for you. Well, uh, on one morning, while I was uh, sitting at my home, that there came a fortune teller lady at my house and she looking at my face she exclaimed that oh, what a handsome face is that <laughs> uh, what a handsome even though I, I was not a handsome man in those days and even today but she exclaimed oh, what a handsome but very very handsome face and she wanted some money and there is lot of lucks are waiting for you fortunes are waiting for you may I tell you something may I tell you something I said that I don't want to hear any such a fortune because my destiny is designed by God and I know that whatever may befall on me, that it has been determined by my God who has called me to the ministry. I don't want to listen to you, I said. Because she, such people, they have the spirit of divination, the spirit of evil, evil spirit. So I denied to hear, but still she was telling me, now you have two daughters and you'll have one more boy. You'll have one more boy. By the time my wife had already operated of her ovaries and uterus, that means no more Pregnancy is suspected anymore to my wife because she has no ovaries, no uterus. Such a woman will never get again pregnant. So, therefore, I knew that this is a spirit of divination. I expelled her from my house. So, many people, because of their, uh, you know, superstitious beliefs, that they trust these kinds of people, that this uh, woman was a woman of a slave girl who was with the, divine, uh, uh, with the spirit of divination, was a fortune teller, fortune teller. The scholars of the Bible have opinion that this woman was also a Devadasi. You know Devadasi? Some Devadasi 
practices were in the heathen temples in the North India and South India. Devadas is also some beautiful young woman are from early in their age devoted to the temple as temple priest in Corinth, Ephesus and many other places. In those days in the Macedonian cities, there were temple priests. They have been they, they have been assigned for prostitution with the priest of the temple and, and uh, the the other people, the high people of the society. Uh, by giving their bodies for prostitution, they will earn money and a certain amount of the money they will hand it over to their own aids, just like these men who are mentioned here and a portion will, will go to the Roman government and another portion will be offered to the heathen temple and the rest of the money that she, they themselves would take. Their money will be part into four, a part to the government, part to the priest and part to the temple and the part to herself. So what happened? She was such a woman and now we know this girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. Say, I was surprised by listening to this woman's uh, sayings. What she said, she never spoke anything against the apostles. You understand that? They never, did, did, did she speak? Nothing. She said nothing against the apostles. And she, she never forbidden them to preach the gospel. Rather, she was crying and saying, Lord, these are the men of the Most High and they are preaching at you the message of salvation. Is there anything wrong that she reclaimed here? Nothing wrong. But why then Paul had to rebuke the evil spirit in hell? That is tragic. I'll tell you. That Paul was preaching, they're standing and preaching and there were an audience listening to the message of Paul. And when this woman came in front of and making these sort of sounds and voices, everybody's attention goes to that woman. So the spirit of divination which was resting in her was distracting the attention of the audience from Paul to this, this woman so that gospel should not be affected to the audience. Understand? This is what sometimes Satan does. And I used to go several times outside to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in public forums where I, when I stand, stand up in the street to deliver the gospel of message what happened, I have experienced that some evil spirit possessed people, that means demon possessed people, or some lunatic people, they would come in front of, they will take their stand in front of us, and they will be speaking something, and they will be doing some dancing, and then, then maybe increase the people, the whole attention will fall on them, uh, taken from our abysses. And this is what Satan is doing. So, Paul, by the spirit, help of the Spirit of God, knew that there was a spirit of divination in this woman, that Paul rebuke the evil spirit from her. These are, she, what she cried, these men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days, not for one day. As many days, suppose Paul went around the city to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, his woman keep on following the apostle and then was keep on crying, saying that these men are the uh, servants of the Most High God and they are preaching and you the way of salvation. Then finally Paul was disturbed and this did many four days and Paul greatly annoyed means destroyed. Paul greatly annoyed means destroyed. Turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out her. And he came out that very hour. So she was a woman, the demon possessed woman. The very moment Paul rebuked the demon in her, the demon came out. When the demon came out, the woman was free of demon. And then she got a sober mind back, and then what happened? Sober mind back, what happened? There, there arose a, 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 a contention then. We know, that, uh, see, verse number 19, but when her masters, that means the people who made her a fortune teller by the spirit of divination, so that the demon came out from her, and she is now set free from demon. When the masters saw that their hope of profit was gone, that means these people were masters were earning money through this woman's divination and fortune telling. And they so found their hope was frustrated because now the demon is out, the woman is not, no more going to fortune see. Understand? So there will be less of their profits. And what happened? When they saw their profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the other beast. Aha, uh -huh. you came to stop our benefits and uh, our earnings. They dragged Apostle Paul, Paul and Barnabas to the marketplace to the other things. And they brought them to the magistrate, city magistrate. 
they brought them to the city magistrates and said these men being used accordingly travel our city these men are who they are Jewish people but they are troubling our city and they teach customs which are not lawful for us being Romans to receive or observe see I was surprised to read this portion because being a Roman citizen what are their privileges being a Roman citizen they can go for prostitution and adultery and fornication there is no problem a Roman citizen can even fall down before the before the idol of Roman emperor because in all the Roman region the emperor had already decreed that every citizen of the country how to fall down and worship the Roman emperor only because Roman emperor was regarded as the regional god so people used to fall before him and worship him they had no problem and they could have involved themselves in all sexual immoralities or political violence or riots there was no problem but these people now say now these Paul and Barnabas being Jews that they are what they are preaching to us what they are preaching to us the laws the customs which are not lawful for us being Romans to receive or observe then the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with the rods and the magistrates said slap them beat them and beat them around now and when they had laid many stripes on them they threw them into prison commanding the jailer to keep them securely Paul and uh, the company were now arrested terribly beaten and was thrown into the Philippian Philippian jail Philippian jail so you understand that this is what it happened now the miracle is happening the rest of the days rest of the verses and when they were shut in the prison we know that uh, nobody has got the prison I have uh, uh, seen if you go to prison you will see that the people are there chained lost all their freedom freedom they are unable to move around they are not permitted to walk outside the the compound so they are in prison there and uh, all their freedom was taken out and these people were chained both on the legs and hands uh, and were put in the inner chamber of the inner chamber of the prison and uh, while on all the other prison cells where people groaning and uh, gnashing their teeth and then you know cursing the jail authorities and the people who have thrown them into the jail only one single room in the midnight the people the Paul and Silas were clapping their hands and praising and worshipping God the Philippian Philippian jail remember that Christians that means truly born again believers are the only people irrespective of their circumstances where they are they can praise and worship God right if they are the dungeon of the lion they will praise God if they are thrown to the burning fire just like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego they will praise God even we read in the book of Daniel they are addressing to the king who commanded them to be thrown out in the fiery furnace our God can deliver us from this fiery furnace and even though he is unwilling to deliver us which means that God may deliver us God can deliver us but God may let us to be consumed into ashes in this fire for his glory even then shall we we shall never fall at the idol you have straightened there up in the village in the, in the city we will never worship that has been the strong determination of this Jewish young, young people and they trusted the Lord they were praising God there in, in the fiery furnace Daniel was praising God in the dun, uh, dungeon of the lions and even Apostle Paul and uh, Peter and Silas all they were praising and singing songs of praises and worship in the prison in the, in the, in the midnight the other people in the other cell they heard Paul and Silas were singing praises and, and uh, songs in the same they all peeped into what was happening they, in the day time they were terribly, ter terribly being striped and they were beaten beaten up and they were thrown, chained with the hands and legs and were thrown into the jail in the inner chamber and even the keeper of the jail was uh, holding his spear at his right hand and in the left hand the lamb that he was 
watching in front of the prison. What, what, what happened? As the Apostle Peter, Paul and Silas were singing songs and praises and thanksgiving to God in the midnight in, in the midnight in the prison cell. What happened? God sent an earthquake. God sent an earthquake. We uh, read in the following verses that the foundation of the foundation of the jail was shaken. Foundation of the jail was shaken. Then what happened? The chains, their hands and legs were loosened out and they were made free. And the moment when this earthquake took place and the chains were loosened, their hands and their legs, the keeper of the jail, that is the jail super, he feared the, the prisoners would have flown away. They, they would have been flown away. If that had happened, what will, what will be the result, you know? In the Roman, in the, according to the Roman law, if a, a, a person, a, a prisoner is run away from the prison where he is chained in, even when the, the watcher is keeping, that means the jail watcher is keeping the jail, all the punishment the prisoner had to fall upon himself, that this prisoner would have to bear alone and he would die. So he knew that Paul and Silas would have escaped from the prison as the earthquake, earthquake took place. So he stood up, what did he do? He took his sword, put it upside down, and then he was about to fall upon it to, to suicide himself. When he, Paul saw this act, he said, he forbid him saying, don't do anything harm to evade cells. Don't do anything harm to evade cells. We are all here. We are all here. That means Paul was sending him a, saying him a message that we are not the people who you are expected of or you are thought of. That in such a golden opportunity is granted to us that we will never run away. We are God's servants. We are God's people. We are servants of the most living God. That we will never take up this opportunity for granted to rescue our life. We are all here. Thou shalt not do anything harmful to thyself. Then this man with the great fear trembling on his body and he jumped in front of them asking them, Sir, before he was said, now he is addressing them, Sir, Sir, what shall I do to be saved? What shall I do to be saved? Please read verse number 31 of chapter 16. 31 of chapter 16, louder. What he asked the question, the jailer asked the question to Paul, Sir, ah, 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 be ah, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Listen here, the Philippian jailer having been trembled himself, having great fear, he is now asking the, uh, the, the apostle Paul and Silas, Sir, what shall I do to be saved? He was talking about his physical salvation. That means for next morning, what will happen? The Roman emperor would call him in, the, in his chamber and he'll ask him the reason for ask him the reason for the escape of the prisoners therein and uh, will accuse him of his uh, failure to keep keep watch at the prison. So he was fearing altogether. Now he said, What shall I do that I should be saved? Paul answered him, Believe, believest thou in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. saved. Believest thou in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be saved. What happened? That moment himself, he and his house soon to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and without much delay, that he witnessed the Lord in the baptism. So the second convert came into city. The third convert came into city. First convert was Lydia, who was a seller of the particular rich woman, the city of Philippi. And second was the, the slave girl who was also a, who was also had a spirit of divination a fortune teller who too who converted uh, into Christianity and tell it the miraculous salvation of the Philippian jailer and his all household. So three families now came into the great salvation through the presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ as a result. A beautiful church was established at the city of Philippi. Later on Paul uh, wrote a beautiful uh, article, uh, letter to this church in Philippi and we read it in the one of the, one of the present episodes of Apostle Paul uh, in the New Testament collections. May I stop here today's last year and then we'll be writing the notes here of their own. And uh, in the next uh, lesson, we will be going to the another subject. Till then, we will say bye. Okay, now it is 11.20. Right, 11.
Thank you.